Everybody that loves the Lord, say amen. 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 John chapter 5 is the text. And that and then the Pentateuch will be the actual text. In John 5, he said, Moses wrote of me. So now you can be seated. <laughs> that was it. For Moses wrote of me. And I'm glad he did. That's at the end of John 5, if you don't believe me. <laughs> you can look at it again. Amen. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And he wrote of me, said Christ. Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> And he said, it, and he said, you don't believe my words because you didn't believe his writings. He said, if you don't believe his writings, you won't believe my words. I hate to tell you all this, but if Jesus appeared in, physical, in his body today and walked through Knoxville, Tennessee, they wouldn't believe his words. Only the ones that believed his writings. You say, well, if one rose from the dead and appeared, then they'd believe. No, it didn't work then. It ain't going to work now. I wish I had somebody. Jesus is going to be on the earth for a thousand years. And at the end, Satan loose for a little seat, and they're going to turn on him then. After looking at him for a thousand years. If he said, you won't believe my words because you didn't believe his writings. I'm going to say I'm a Bible believer. Amen. And I'm not a Bible corrector. Amen. There ain't nothing to correct except us. Amen. Moses wrote of me. That's what he said. Now the Holy Ghost is strong in here. Chained my sermon three times. And if they'd have done whatever he requested, it'd have been another sermon. <laughs> but but we're going to end up on the one where the thing stopped spinning right there at the one. Children of the dust. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Yes. So that made me think of this. I've been preaching lately. Penny took pictures. What Moses wrote, and he wrote of me. And by the way, the story of Jesus is the story of Jesus' sacrifice. What he did on Calvary is what he's about. It wasn't his teachings. It wasn't his example. It wasn't his kindness. All that's true and right. And the world don't mind you having a Jesus that they're comfortable with. I mean, the world celebrates the Jesus in a manger. The whole world sings Christmas carols, don't they? I ain't never seen anybody repent over Christmas. I ain't against it. I'm for it. I do things you probably don't even like at Christmas time. But don't really care. I like to get presents. It's a good occasion. <laughs> I know what December the 25th was, and what it was, but guess what? It was our day before it was their day. I can't help but they corrupted the day. I'll do what I want on that day. Come on. Well, that didn't go nowhere, but I, but I got news for you. The world don't mind you having a Jesus in a manger. The Roman Catholics, they don't mind you having a dead Jesus hanging on a cross. And these contemporary modern mega church boys don't mind you having a Jesus who's wearing flip flops and a ponytail and just wants every day to be Friday. The feel good Jesus, y'all ain't helping me. But that Jesus that we worship, he came to die and he did die and he died for my sin and he died as my sin. He died with my sin. My sin died with him. He went down in the grave and three days later he got up from the grave and he sits on high where he ascended. 
He's coming back with judgment. I wish they had somebody. That Jesus John saw in Revelation 1, you don't ever see him being talked about out and around. I don't even hear half you Baptists talking about him like that. You got that long-haired, little, white-fingered Jesus praying over your grandma's table. That ain't the Jesus of Revelation 1. Oh, I'm glad Moses wrote about it. Hallelujah to God. If you wanted another sermon, you should have sung another song. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> I'm going to say five things and absolutely pop a happy bubble on every one of them. And if you don't, I'm going to throw a songbook at you. In, I'm going to say it and then rejoice in it. In Genesis... The blood got me. The blood was on the ground and got me up. Guess I ought to expound that a little bit before I, you, I expect you to enter into it. Man came out of the dust and that DNA spiral was going upwards and then he sinned and here came death and it started going down. And it was go and sin took us back to the dust, and it took us all the way to the damned. It took us. It would have took us all the way to hell, but at God came in that garden, and and, and He made coats of skins. And I feel like He probably had to kill an animal to do that. And when that blood hit the ground. <laughs> And made them coats of skin. Man's salvation began. I wish I had somebody. Adam was a going down, but then here he started coming back up. And then Abel in the next chapter, he took that blood and by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts. That blood, I feel like he went back to where them two cherubim stood at the garden. One of the first pictures of the mercy seat. There's probably a rock, an altar there. I'm feeling strong about that. And he came there and by a divine appointment, they stood there and presented a divine atonement. And there's that bloody place with them two cherubim. Amen. <laughs> and it's the first picture you get in your Bible of the mercy seat. I find it interesting, Brother Lawson. That, and by the way, good to see you, and good to see you doing good. And I want to give you a little announcement. You can't die and ain't gonna die until your time to die comes. There's an appointment you ain't gonna leave here before then. You ain't gonna leave here after then. You'll die right when he wants you to die. And so will I. And so will you. Amen. And he'll be there for them that belong to him. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. The rich man died and he was buried. But that beggar died and he was carried. You can't get that language out of them funny Bibles. Amen. Oh my. And Abel, that blood hit the ground and it brought him up from his father's fall. <laughs> All right, we're moving on there. Y'all didn't say amen good enough. See, it cost you five minutes. In Genesis, we see, you learn. <laughs> In Genesis, we see the blood on the ground, and it got me up. In Exodus, we see the blood on the door, and that got me out. In Leviticus, you see the blood on the altar, and that let me in. In Numbers, you see the blood on the cross, and that let me live. Yes, sir. I tell half of them never have read numbers, Pastor. <laughs> All right, that cost you five minutes. You'll learn. Numbers is pretty boring reading all them names. And they've all got a number, a verse, verse number, and there's all them names. 
it's pretty boring until you realize that everybody counts. If y'all got Lutheran on me, let's try that again. It's pretty boring until you realize that he's got every name named. And there's a number with every name. Everybody's counted because everybody counts. Well, you still ain't happy about that. What, did y'all watch football all day yesterday? Let's try this again. You don't rejoice because the devils are subject unto you, but you rather rejoice because your names are written down. There's a name recorded. Hallelujah. Who cares if the stupids beat the dummies and got the inflated pig skin over white chalk? Huh. I was at a game yesterday and now I know why I'm against it. <laughs> Hallelujah to God, honey. We don't rejoice because the world makes a big deal about our name because most of us, they never will. But honey, if God's got your name recorded, you ought to thank him and praise him. And so after all them names are numbered, you run over there into Numbers 21, you run right into a brave serpent that's lifted up. And they all had poison, was dying. Them fiery serpents was a-biting them. And God said, you put a brass, I'm about to have a happy bubble is what I'm about to do. I'm about to teach these young boys how to take a lap around church, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, put a brass serpent up and hang it up on a pole. And I'm reminded Jesus said in John 12, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That's right. Hey, y'all. Numbers ain't boring. It gave us John 3, 16. Is that what John 3, 14? He's trying to explain and preach and teach to Nicodemus. And he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So I can't imagine my lovely Savior being portrayed as a serpent. Well, honey, he had to become the essence and embodiment of the very evil that was taking us all to a God-cursed, God-forsaken hell, a fiery place of torment that was created for the devil and his angels. I'm glad we still go to church somewhere where somebody believes in hell and where somebody believes in heaven and somebody believes in sin and somebody believes in a bloody sacrifice that'll save you from from your sin. Numbers gave us John 3, 16. And so you go to Numbers and you see the blood on the cross. I got to thinking about something, Brother Lawson. There, before Jesus went to Calvary, and I'm gonna need all the Bible students to holler amen right here. Didn't he become a worm? Well, they watered down them old hymns and they took that out of some of the old hymns. Alas, whoo, I'm feeling a little WWF, amen. Feel like we could throw a chair at a liberal and God would be happy about it, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and hit them in the temple region, hope it knocks them out. Alas, and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Now where did that language come from, that worm language? Because in Psalm 22, that messianic psalm that takes us to Calvary, the seven sands of the cross, honey, he said, but I'm a worm and no man. What do you think you'll be in hell without God, without grace? Honey, but a worm where their worm dieth not. And the fire's not, I told you sin was taking you down. And you'd have ended up in the hellish image of your hellish father. 
and you'd have been a worm slithering throughout eternity in the midst of dragons and serpents. What's wrong with this hour? Hollywood putting out all these pet dragons and how to train your dragon, how to love your dragon. Got a dragon in every other thing Hollywood puts out. Honey, if you can't smell the Antichrist walking amongst us, if you can't see the top of that heavenly veil, right where they, <laughs> they're fixing to rip her in twain. Mm. I thought about this, Brother Lawson. There Judas sat. He is a devil from the beginning. Very mysterious character. And he's filled with Satan that night. And Jesus got under him to wash his feet. He got under him. And we don't think about that Middle Eastern, honey, that shoe, to show someone the bottom of your shoe is an offense because of what it's been rubbed in, the filth and the mire and the sewage and the corruption and, 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 the, and the shoes and then so. And he took off his shoes. <laughs> got under him, the bottom of his feet. And I got to thinking about this, Pastor. Only a worm can get under a serpent. Boy, he went low yes, to get me and you. Y'all ain't helping me. I said he went low. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 Squire Parsons used to sing it when I could not come to where he was because he was so high. He came to where I was. And I was so low. First song I ever shouted to. I met Jesus and got full of the Holy Ghost on a Thursday night. We shouted to 2 a.m., 37 people saved, seven called to preach. Boy, we need a revival for these kids, Pastor. How come every time I come through here, I get a burden for these kids to have revival? Yes, sir. <laughs> got filled with the Holy Ghost on a Thursday night. And on a Sunday, Daddy and Daddy and mama and them, <laughs> if you're from the north, that would be a mother and a father. <laughs> but down here in this part of Knoxville, that's mama and daddy and them. <laughs> it's one word, so you ain't got to waste time. Because <laughs> we got to go eat. Did y'all eat yet? <laughs> Try to interpret that. Somebody learning English. <laughs> mama and daddy and them. They carried us all down to the homecoming at Bon Argy's Baptist Church. Sons of Thunder. When you name your church after the Sons of Thunder, <laughs> you ain't looking to have First Baptist Church. <laughs> Sons of Thunder. And we went to the homecoming and a fella got up saying, when the Savior reached down for me. Yeah. And that, that unspeakable joy and full of glory was kicking around in my soul. I didn't even hardly know what it was, but it <laughs> come out before I knowed it. Shouted. Because that's only a worm can get under a serpent. Look how low he went for me and you. Look how low he went. He didn't just bear my sin. He became my sin. He bore my sin till he became my sin. And there he was the very embodiment and essence of all the evil that was taking us down. But he went down a little further. <laughs> Scooped us up off the bottom of hell and picked us up. Oh my. Brother Joe Parsons said this, Brother Lawson, years ago, that old man of God, I guess he's been dead 25, 30 years. He said this and I had to chew on it. He said, he said, your sin came from heaven and your salvation came from hell. He said, before you get too rattled about this thing getting all messed up, he said, you ain't you gonna rattle God. He said, your sin came from heaven and your salvation came from hell. Well, I had to hit rewind and think on that for half a day. But here's what old brother Parsons said. 
sin was found in Lucifer's heart right there in the very presence of God in the throne room. Original iniquity. And when he came in the garden there to tempt man, it was that pride and that, rebe- and that self worship and that rebellion and that stubbornness. Your sin came from heaven. Your salvation came from hell. He said Jesus had to go to the very bottom of hell to pay the ultimate price to scoop you up out of that mire. (laughs) He said that's where he saved you when he pulled you up off the bottom. In Genesis, the blood was on the ground and it got me up. In Exodus, the blood was on the door and it got me out of Egypt, out of bondage. Out of Satan's, out of Satan's grip. In in Leviticus, the blood, the high priest carried it into the Holy of Holies and laid it on the altar and let me come into the presence of God. There I will commune with thee. In Numbers, we see the blood on the cross and that let me live. He said, just look and live. I'm glad it's all grace. I wish I had somebody right there. If you look, you can live. And then Deuteronomy. If you got blood, now where's, where are you going to find a picture of Christ and Calvary? In Deuteronomy. Well, you don't have to read far until you run into those six cities of refuge. I'm going to say this, and if y'all act like Lutherans, I'm throwing something at you. You better pop a happy bubble or I'll be, dis- I'll be so disappointed. <laughs> Deuteronomy, if you got blood on your hands, it'll let you escape. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're guilty and the avenger and the accuser is coming after you, you can run to the nearest city of refuge. If you had blood on your hands, And honey, if anybody ever had blood on their hands, it was me and you. We killed him at Calvary. I know, listen, somebody said the Romans killed him and they did. Somebody said the Jews killed him and they did. Somebody said it was our sin, the Gentile that killed him and it did. Truth was, Jesus laid down his life. And the truth is, the Father killed him. (laughs) Amen, you can blame it on the devil. And, everybody, and all of it's true, but God's the one that gave his only begotten son. <laughs> Woo. I was over there in Rome, Pastor, carrying them boys to Albania. By the way, we got a group in Albania as we speak. God, finally enough, I've told you, Preacher Lawson, you've been in the hospital and having your health battle. I only know if I told you. But God, y'all know I've been carrying young preachers to Albania for eight years. God gave us a man. One of them boys, Aaron Wilson, wife of three little babies. Been praying, just doing what God told me to do. You carry them in there and I'll call one of them and we'll get the Albania gospel missions going. Brother Aaron said that God called him as a little boy to be a missionary. He's 28. He said he's been surrendered the whole time. (laughs) Amen. God called him. He quit his job in January. Started full-time deputation. This is September. The last time I checked what month it was, it was September, I think. I don't know what month. September. (laughs) And he's at 80%. In just eight or nine months. He got 80% of his support. And he's there right now. He's there right now with his wife. and got a dozen people with him. And his wife and they're getting the place secured to live. Amen. What about that? And, and when we finally get boots on the ground, I'll carry you boys. We're going to keep carrying young preachers in there. I'd like to see his church get going. And then five churches and then ten. And then 50. Yes, sir. That's where Titus was sent. Tradition has it, and it's, and it's a credible, credible traditional report that they stoned Titus over there in a little coliseum in Duras, Albania, which was ancient Macedonia. 
And we go down in that Colosseum every time and read the book of Titus. Amen. They said Paul came back in there and went down in the same Colosseum and dared the whole town to come out. <laughs> he wasn't no little limp-wristed, kissing babies, hugging grannies type of preacher. <clears throat> he wouldn't have done down at the First Baptist. They said, they said he came back in there and went down to that Colosseum and dared the town to come out. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, my. It was in Rome last year. <clears throat> went down in that Paul's prison where Nero had him. And got down in there and they will not mention Paul. The Roman Catholic Church will not mention Paul. No, they will not mention Paul. No mention of them. They, they said that was Peter's prison. And here's what they said, and I'm talking about that blood. They said that Peter, and I'm going to quote for you. <clears throat> they said, our holy father Peter, which divided time and holds the world together, shed his blood in this place. And they said, the holy blood of our holy father Peter dripped in the river that runs through Rome and the nations of the world have come to Rome ever since to have their sins washed away in this holy water. I'm going to tell you something, preacher. There's so many demons, you couldn't hardly breathe. It was, it, was, it was so Satan. If you could have been there and felt it when they said it, it's almost like Satan's talking to you. And, we, and then they took us in the next room, all this in Paul's prison. And there's a dead Jesus. They got a big statue. A dead Jesus. He's dead. All the Jesus I ever found in Rome was a dead Jesus. He's either in Mary's lap or on a cross. And he's dead every time. Went in the next room and they let Jesus talk to you. And here's what their Jesus said. Hello, brothers and sisters. Let us love each other. and Have cupcakes. <laughs> kiss babies and just twirl around like a ballerina. It went something like that. It was this. It was sickening. Amen. And I come out of there and, st and they won't even mention Paul. And his name's it's in the ancient building. His name's up there. They won't even mention it. Well, I got news for you. It's not the blood of Peter Amen. that drift in a river it was a river of blood that came out of the veins of the son of God <clears throat> and I will make this little announcement on a Sunday morning that there is a fountain and it's filled with blood and it's drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all all their guilty stains. Now, preacher, those six cities of refuge, I started looking at them and there's happy bubbles popping everywhere. I got Holy Ghost intoxicated just looking at them. There's three on either side of the Jordan. <laughs> that means no matter from which side you're from, there's salvation for you. Y'all ain't helping me. That's right. You can be from the other side of the tracks. That's right. That's right. And, and he lives over there. Amen. He saves drunks and harlots and dope Amen. addicts. Amen. He saves bastards and he saves orphans. Amen. And he lives on either side of the track. Right. And if you're from the wilderness side or the promised land side, there's salvation for you. Amen. You may have been born in a crack house you may have been born in the church house. You're both going to hell and you both better find a city of refuge. Yeah. Yeah. You may have been born with money. You may have been born in poverty. You may have been born with a heritage. You may have been born and not even know what your heritage is. But on either side, thank bless it, on either side, there was a city of refuge. Tell you something else, young people. At every major crossroad in the Holy Land in those days, anytime you came to a crossroad on your journeys, 
there was an arrow pointing to the nearest city of refuge. Come on. And youngins, I'm glad at every crossroad that you're going to face in life. The Holy Ghost, the Word of God, the man, there'll be an arrow pointing. How to get to Calvary. You youngins just head for Calvary every time you come to a crossroads. <laughs> and, I, and I found another happy bubble in there. Amen. You know you have an old time at church when a fellow wearing overalls is sitting on the side making sure y'all are doing right. <laughs> and the fellow over here in a bow tie look like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> That's old time church. Bow tie and overalls. If you had overalls with a bow tie, I'd get you to sign my Bible. <laughs> Amen. I found out this, that when a high priest retired from age 30 to age 50, and when he was done with his office, that he retired and lived in the city of refuge, which everyone is close to. And here's what they're saying. They said when that high priest died upon his death, that everybody in that city of refuge that was hiding from their adversary, upon the death of the high priest, they were all released. <laughs> Pardoned and released and allowed to go back home. Mm, if I got to preach that to you, you've been hanging out with liberals. Right, come on. Our high priest died. Amen. And released all of us amen, amen, amen. from the guilt and the condemnation and the sentence that hovered over us. He died so that we could go free. That I could still go free. What kind of man? Who would reach, I didn't know I could hit them notes, reach down his hand and do that for me. Unworthy to live, not fit to kill. But then a man on the cross put me in his will. That tested or. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That testator put me in his will and then he died on purpose so I could get everything in his will. Amen. He died, but he didn't stay dead. Amen. He got up again three days later. Well, I would let y'all go eat lunch, but it's a bad deal for y'all. They made my lunch and it's right there, so I ain't in no hurry. <laughs> y'all shouldn't tell me that, Sister Lawson, until after church. Oh my, I'm glad the blood, it got down in that cursed ground where I was and brought me back up. I dare you to read Genesis, I dare you to believe it. That blood brought Adam back up out of the dirt. Hey Amen. go back up there and get on that piano, dear sister. Get ready to sing it again. You're responsible for this sermon, so you gotta finish it. Children of the dust. But I'm a-heading for the stars. He brought me up out of the dust. Life out of the dust. And here came sin. Started me back down, but here came blood. Kicked me back up. And that blood is the life. The life is in the blood. In Genesis, that blood. I want you to softly play, sis. In Genesis, that blood. It got Adam up out of the cursed ground. It got Abel up out of his father's fall. It got the ark up above. <laughs> I'm trying to quit, but my lunch is right there. It got the ark. I seen something I'd never seen before. It got the ark up above the flood water of wrath and judgment. I never seen something before. He gave them specific and strict instructions how to fill that ark with lambs yeah. yes. for sacrifice. That's right. Y'all didn't hear me. That ark was filled with sacrificial lambs. 
How do you think it got up above the flood waters? You looking at an old boy that is filled with a sacrificial lamb. Amen. The Lamb of God, does he didn't just come for me, he came to me. He's on the inside. That's going to lift me up above the, when that wrath breaks out. That blood got Adam up out of the cursed ground. It got Abel up out of his father's fall. It got the ark up out of the flood waters of judgment. And it got Abraham up from off an altar. It got Abraham's son off that altar. And it got Abraham's seed out of that first book. And they carried it out there, carried his bones. I am so glad that Moses wrote about Christ. And I could stand up here and preach about it. Preach the same sermon Jesus preached. I'm trying to hush. Them two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Jesus joined them with them. Hey, hey, hey! And beginning at Moses. He preached a seven mile sermon. Bring it on. Come on. All the way to Emmaus. So how long does it take to preach the whole Old Testament? However long it takes to walk seven miles. I ain't never done that, so I couldn't tell you. I ain't a pla- One of you health nuts do that and just tell us how long it took you. And then to multiply it by two, we ain't gonna walk as fast as you. Because you crazy. He walked that seven miles and told them all the things concerning himself. Oh, I'm trying to hush. And they didn't know him, preacher, until he broke the bread. I've wondered, preacher man, was that one of the very first, look, could we see the Lord's Supper in that? I'm not gonna force it in there, but I've wondered. Hey, that's the first time them hands were nail scarred and they broke bread. I wonder, if that was a, I wonder if that could qualify as having the Lord's Supper. I don't know, Brother Law. I'm kind of thinking if Jesus just got up out of the grave and with them nail-scarred hands, he broke bread and prayed. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you we had the Lord's Supper. Now, I've never even thought about this to just now. But he broke it. That broken bread, the picture of his broken body. None of his bones were broken, but his body was broken. And he blessed it, and there would be the blood. I don't know if there's any blood there or not, but them nails in his hand, prints, that would be the blood, symbolize the blood, and there's the bread, broken. (laughs) And he offered it to, and their eyes were opened. And he vanished out of their sight. One of these days, our eyes are going to be open and he's going to appear in our sight. Yes, and we're never going to lose sight of him. Never going to lose sight of him again. Yes, and they shall see his face. Here's my altar call. I'm going to ask her to sing. And I don't know what you ought to do this morning. If you lost, Jesus will save you. And he'll save you if you'll just come to him. Faith and repentance. You don't need to understand that. <clears throat> if you're coming to him, the odds are you believe that you're supposed to, that's faith. And your broken, contrite heart, junk your pride and come to him, that's faith and repentance. If you come to him, he'll save you. You young people, maybe all the young people ought to get on this altar and pray that God send them a revival. Wouldn't that be something? I almost preached this morning on what good is a heritage without a hair. What good is a heritage without a heir? Did you know Milford Biddle? Milford Biddle, 89 year old man of God from down Georgia way, preached all over the South. <clears throat> he preached in West Virginia last week, preached in an evening service, went and laid down and woke up in heaven. <laughs> Tomorrow night in the camp meeting service and I'm hosting down in Ringgold, Georgia 
I'm going to honor my father and his pastor. <laughs> and I'm going to challenge them young preachers to come get this man. <laughs> you youngins ought to get on this altar and pray for a Holy Ghost revival to break out amongst you young people in this church. I want everybody to stand. Some of you need to come thank him. And some of you need to come ask him. Saying this.
children of the dust Out of the stars What happened in here this morning is the start. Amen, young people. The start, the beginning. Because what you found here in this altar, whatever happened to you here, whatever you said to the Lord here, take it with you when you leave here. Yes. God doesn't live with you for just a moment. He lives with you forever. Yes. Day by day by day, moment by moment by moment, life by life by life, you'll find more and more and more of Him. God's man preached God's word. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But God's word is not bound. It's not limited to just something that happens. It's forever. That means it'll be with you forever. And that's what I encourage you to do now, to come back again tonight mm -hmm. at 6 o'clock for the evening service. He'll be preaching again. Folks, he covered some deep stuff in here. And I don't know if you, if, if some of it might, might fly across the top of your head, but... That's some powerful things that he said. Yes. And uh, thank God for the word that he preached. And uh, it's the kind of thing you need to go home now and think about. Just uh, as Mary pondered those things in her heart when Gabriel had made all that announcement to her. That's what you need to do. Take it home with you and think about it. Think about it. His word is something. It's yes, the it word is. of God, not man. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to talk yes, to him in a few minutes about his his experience over there and what he heard. And that's pure filth and blasphemy coming out of the mouth of these people over there at the Vatican. Well, let's have a word of prayer and we'll let you go. We're going to have, we're going to meet, well, I forget now. We're going to, we're going to give out these awards. And I'd like to mention too, that after the service tonight, we're having ice cream supper and we'd like for you to come and uh, everybody's invited. We're going to have ice cream, I think cake and all kinds of things like that. So, we're going to be meeting up in, uh, up there and, and having that, so you all keep that in mind. But go ahead and be seated for a moment. I want to hand these awards out to this morning. We want to honor these young people. Uh,